There is a huge problem with this knife. As great as it is, there's one massive issue. Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And today we are checking out the Arno Bernard Orca. This knife is absolutely amazing in so many ways. But like I said in the very beginning, there is one huge issue that we will get into in the bad. First, I want to thank Floydian214 on Instagram for letting me check this amazing knife out because it is an amazing knife. And ever since even Spirited Blades owned it, um, I wanted to check it out. I know Metal Complex got to review it and, you know, I've been drooling over it for a while. And Kara helped make uh, his design on his sticker and awesome sticker, but, uh, Thank you, bud, for letting me check out so many amazing knives. Not even just this one. A bunch of amazing knives. So thank you very much, bud. I appreciate it. Let's go over this knife. This is a custom knife, so it's not cheap. But that also, you know, makes the issue that it has even more, you know, even worse. So let's get into it. So we do have an M390 blade and titanium and then the inlay is warthog tusk which is very beautiful there's different uh versions of this where they actually even have woolly mammoth uh tusk inlays and i seen uh uh i think it was ram horn inlays lots of different inlays it is complete titanium the hardware's titanium um let's get into some specs really quick so it's about eight and a half inches long with a 3.6 inch blade here it is next to to the xm18 you can see it's a little bit longer than the xm18 here it is next to the shiro Gurov f3r i know a lot of people aren't familiar with it but if you're in the market for this knife maybe possibly you never know but they're about the same size here it is next to the Cold Steel Code 4. A lot of people know this knife, and they are very similar as well. And then the Spider Co. Shaman, a little bit shorter than it. And here is the Benchmade 940, which is obviously shorter than it. Anyways, let's talk about the knife. So... One, the blade and geometry is amazing. The blade stock thickness is, I think it was like 155 thousandths. Behind the edge thickness is between 10 and 13 thousandths. Wow. It is very thin behind the edge and has a beautiful um, polished satin finish. That just looks gorgeous. It is a, more of a drop point. I guess you consider it a drop point blade shape. But I haven't used it. But man I can only imagine this thing would slice really good. The tip is uh, a nice thin tip. Great for slicing. This thing would be a cutting machine. The jimping. This is the type of jimping I like to see. Probably the best jimping I've seen in a long long time. This I mean, I've seen a lot of great jimping. I'm not saying I haven't seen great jimping, but this jimping is amazing. You can see how thin that, that grind winds up getting. It gets super thin. It does have the little fuller there for the middle finger flick. We'll get into the action in just one second. The ergos are another thing that's amazing. It's got such a neutral grip. I would have totally put this in my uh, my best ergos, you know, best ergonomic knives or best uh, knives in the hand because this thing is great. I do feel the clip a little bit because of where it's placed, but it's still really good in the hand. Especially locking up with that jimping. You can take advantage of this a little bit if you need to. But just right there is super good. It just has that right thickness and depth. And the inlay, you know, kind of swells out a little bit. Let's look at that inlay really quick. The inlay is just so beautiful. 
so gorgeous. I'm doing this review right now because I'm not going to use this knife. Um, because of the one issue and because it's an expensive custom knife, I wasn't asked to use it or anything like that. So, you know, it's one of those things. Let's get into this action, which is... Whew, the action on this thing is so crisp and so good. The jimping on the flipper tab is really sharp, but it's it just grips you. If you touch that flipper tab, I mean, it doesn't matter. Even if I get down here, I'll bet you I can still get it. Yeah, because it's just so grippy. So you can get away with doing a push button or a light switch very easily. And then the middle finger flick works so good. And listen to the sounds. Thumb flick works good. Everything... It's the detent and uh, the detent and the smoothness is so on point that you can just lightly push that flipper tab and it goes off. The action's amazing, 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 amazing action. The lock bar access really good, and you're always past the detent ball because the detent is nice and early, so it's always above your finger. Now the drop is so smooth. Look how smooth this thing drops. I mean, it's a false shot action, pretty much. The detent is so tuned and so crisp. Yeah, very false shotty. Yeah. This action is uh, definitely one of the best parts about this knife. Centering, perfect. Centering's nice and perfect. <clears throat> the lock bar tension. Um, it's not really strong lock bar tension, but it, uh, you know, it's about what you'd expect, I guess. It's not, uh, yeah, it's fine. And the access to the lock bar, like I said, it, everything's nice and chamfered really nice. You could tell... You know, this knife is a great, great knife. Titanium backspacer. That's just a plain backspacer. You know, but it fits the palm really nicely. The hardware is all done really good. Even the, the, the steel lock bar insert is done with T8s. That is awesome. You know, there is a steel lock bar insert T8's holding it in, love that. But then you see, if you can really see it right there, there's an over travel stop too, which is cool. Actually, you could probably see it from this side better right there. That's really awesome, it's nice to have that. And the clip kind of acts as an over travel stop too. All T8's all the way around, I love seeing that. No T6's. The line around the inlay is done great. You can see it's raised up. Yeah, this hardware for titanium hardware, really good hardware. Now, all the great things about this thing, what are the bad? So let's just get it out there, the worst part about it. I'm just going to get to that and then I'll go down the list because there are a couple other small details, but there's one massive one. And, you know, I feel bad to show this because I know this knife is not cheap. The one with the woolly mammoth tusk was going for like 900 bucks. This one... I imagine isn't much cheaper, but here we go. Very easy to fail. I actually almost cut myself pretty bad. When I went to check it, I went like this, and I had my hand right here, and I went like that, and it just, like, closed right on my hand. And I got lucky, though, because, the you know, like, I, I like, went to stop it right away. But I, you know, no pressure on the lock bar. And it will fail very easily. It doesn't even take much effort. Like, I haven't banged on it or anything like that. Just grabbing it and checking for blade play, it fails very easily. Now, there's a reason for it. And I'm going to show that right now. The reason why it does that, because then I, I start thinking about, like, why is this thing doing this so easily? And I figured out why. Let's look at it. So... I don't like putting fingerprints on this knife, and I want you to see this very clearly. Look at, this is why I always show this in my videos. I always try to show the lock bar geometry, or at least I try to. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. Look at the lock bar geometry. Now, this is a custom knife, so, you know, it's 
it, it looks a little rough. That's not what bothers me. Um, because, you know, they're going to change things and manipulate things to, to make it perfect, you know, in the shop. But you see the decline it doesn't have a flat spot. So let me show a knife really quick. Okay, so look at this. Do you see how it's flat right there and then it has an incline? So the first part where the lock bar is going to first show up at the very beginning. Ah, uh, sorry, let me get another knife. Right here is flat because that's where the lock bar is going to go. And then it has an incline going uphill right there so that it, the lock bar doesn't just go all the way over. This has an incline the entire time. It doesn't have a flat spot. So when you put pressure on the lock bar, the lock bar is on a hill. Basically like this where... And if when the pressure goes down from me pushing on the back of the blade, it just pushes it out rather than having a flat spot and then a decline so it can have a place to go and then it can't get any further because there's steel in the way or, you know, so basically this one's just like this, just a flat incline and it just pushes it right out of the way. Hopefully that made a lot of sense. So that's a pretty big issue. Um, you'd hate to be using the knife and get it stuck in something and try to pull it out and it close on your hand, which honestly, I don't think would happen. I really don't. I think that the pressure from your hand, because with frame locks, when you're squeezing them, it's pretty hard to fail because you're putting pressure that way on the lock bar you know you're actually putting pressure there so like if i squeezed it right here i don't think it would close but without no pressure it will so big thing next thing that i think that I, well that's you know my personal thing one it fingerprints really bad obviously so we'll just get that out of there next thing the arnold bernard i don't really like the way it looks right there i know it's pro it's his thing so it's not too big of a complaint but i'd rather it be smaller or maybe just up here in the corner or something or maybe just a logo or something but i know his name you know it's you know i understand it so i'm not really complaining about that too much Man, that action is so good. The clip placement. Do not like it. Look where your pocket goes. Right into this seam. And it's so low because there's so much meat on this thing. So you're, it's hanging out of your pocket. Like, Well, it kind of sits at an angle, but it's like this. Now, the clip works okay, but it also... I don't like clips that do that. It does carry pretty decent, though. I'm not really complaining about how it carry. Well, I, I guess I am, but... It works good. It just doesn't, it carries, you know, pretty shallow, a lot kind of hangs out. Uh, blade to handle ratio is great though. Um, that's another thing that's actually really good. The spine is nice and crowned. There's so many great things. And I'm going to go over some more of the great things because I do not want to end this on a bad note because this knife is so amazing in so many ways. Next thing, the backspacer. Uh, I mean, it's a backspacer, right? not that big of a deal whatever it's just being the type of price it is and everything i don't know um it's just kind of plain don't get me wrong it's seamless i mean this thing is done very well but and also there's a lanyard hole that actually um doesn't like you can't see it it goes through the backspacer now i could have did without that and just moved the clip right there uh, uh to be honest i don't see anybody really putting a lanyard on this type of knife I mean, I don't know, maybe you would, but I would rather have the clip right there, just in my opinion, especially with how much meat is on this clip. And it's a one, um, this is another thing, let me show you guys. It's a one screw uh, placement uh, clip, which is fine because it's inserted in the titanium. That's a good thing because um, the problem with only having one screw in clips like this is they tend to shift. This one a little tiny bit of shift not much there you see it a little tiny bit of shift now that's because that cutout it's almost perfect but it's not quite perfect if it was nice and tight where it dropped down into it it would be it'd be great but it's a little bit big if you could see you see the gap right there 
if I push it that way, you see the gap right there. So it needs to be a little bit tighter fit, but this is a custom. So, you know, like little things like that, you know, you think that when you think custom, like, oh no, that should be perfect. That's not how it goes, man. It's not a CNC machine doing it. So you can kind of give it a little leeway in some areas when a human being is doing it. We're not robots. So not that big of a deal. And I could probably just tighten the screw down a little bit and it'd be fine. Um, also, the finish on the clip, if I can get to come up, because there's a lot of reflection from it, it's kind of cool. Um, I wish I'd get to come up. in. Oh, there we go. In the middle, you see how it's got like milling in the middle? That's kind of cool, right? Uh, but the edges don't have that, just the middle right there. I thought that that was kind of, kind of a cool little touch. The finish on the titanium is really nice. It's kind of like a... a I don't know if it's a bead blast or like an aluminum oxide blast, but it, it's uh, really cool. But it's a lot softer than you'd think. But the way it looks, it kind of looks like it would feel like a Chris Reeve. And maybe after a Chris Reeve is carried for a while, and maybe this one used to be like that, but it's uh, it's actually pretty smooth. Um, but it does have a bead blasted texture. The, um, the stop pin, decent size. Not bad at all. Couldn't complain. Nice shouldering. Next bad thing, Troil plunge grind. Um, let's let's look at it. So they missed it. it look, it's it's good right now. There's I'm not really complaining about the way it's done right now. What I'm complaining about is the future sharpenings because it literally terminates right at the line of the plunge grind. You see, I hate you guys looking at my fingers because they're so nasty, but right there where it finishes. Don't look at my nails, guys. Stop. Uh, but right, right here where it finishes, you, that is the, the termination of the plunge grind. Or, you know, the, the bottom of the plunge grind, I should say. And, man, this thing is so reflective. I'm sorry. I moved my lighting just a little bit. So, but what I'm trying to say, though, is that when I sharp, if I sharpen it, if I started sharpening it, I'd probably get one or two sharpenings out of it before it started creating a smile. So if they would have just made this sharpening choil just a little bit farther, it would be perfect. But it kind of terminates right there, which I guess in return, though, you do get full cutting length potential. Like um, you get more sharp and sharpened edge. So, you know, that's just a complaint for me because I like to sharpen knives and I think about that stuff. Because I think about the problems I run into when I'm sharpening knives and things I have to watch out for and manipulate, you know, whatever. But just a little thing. Now, this next thing isn't necessarily a bad thing, um, but I'm just going to mention it because it did happen. There were rust speckles all around here. I did get them out. I think they were just surface. Um, you might even see a little tiny one right there. I did get the majority or if not all of them out and i did oil it so and i'll make sure i clean it again before i ship it back to make sure there's absolutely nothing and that it gets packaged properly um i don't know what that would have came from this is m390 m390 is very stain resistant and i don't doubt that it's not real m390 i might have just had something splash on it and it wasn't cleaned off properly or something i have no idea you know, it could be a, a, a whole bunch of different reasons, but it did happen. So I am mentioning it. Um, and, you know, just let you know, you know, you, you want to make sure you take care of your steel, even if it is M390. This isn't the first time I've seen that happen, M390. So, but I did get it out and I am oiling it and making sure, you know, it, uh, you know, it's taken care of. Next thing. This jimping right here is pretty sharp. Now, it doesn't bother my hand, my right hand, because I have a huge callus right there, like a massive callus. And, but like, I could feel it grabbing that callus. Now, if I put it in my left hand, if I start going like this, I could feel it really getting irritating. Like if I kept cutting, you know, and I didn't have the callus on my right, because I'd be cutting right-handed. But if I was cutting left-handed, I can feel it. It's, it's, pretty sharp now in return that's the 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 uh, the jipping for the the flip so i love it on the flip <laughs> i do but you know a lot of times you know your finger 
isn't as it's more tender on the side of your finger than it is you know on the you know the the padded or the uh, fingerprint part whatever the um you know where you flip it at so you it could be an issue for some people it might be a little sharp for some people i don't think it's a big deal because i got a callus there but i can definitely feel it grabbing my callus it's sharp it really is i mean let's just look at it really quick because this is what helps it be, be such an amazing flipper i mean it's I actually like it because of the flipper. I, I almost probably wouldn't change it because it flips so good. But, you know, it's just a thing. The fuller works so good for that middle finger flick because the detent is so tuned. And the drop on it is so smooth. It's definitely a fall shut knife. Like, if I don't move, it won't fall. Or it probably will slowly fall if I barely move. <laughs> This thing's pretty awesome, but there are those little things, man. Those little things. Ooh. Yeah. But all in all, I do like the knife a lot. If I, if it was mine, I would probably send it to Bernard, Arnold Bernard, and ask him to fix that. That The one main issue. All the rest, you can overlook. Not a big deal because the knife is that amazing. It's such an amazing, amazing knife. But that little detail. There you guys go. Uh, Floydian, thank you for letting me check this out. I'm sorry, I, you know, I learned that. But, you know, I can't uh, BS, so I love you guys. Thanks again, Floydian. Peace.